everybody, and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And most of all, you're enjoying your modern railways. What we're going to be doing this week is looking at filling in these KR Allen Ore uh, wagons. Um, as in the real thing, these ran from Pine Dock to Concept Steelworks. And uh, they normally used to be either 8 or 9 in a rake, depending on the locomotives they had available. Um, because these used to weigh a ton, actually more than that. I think they were about 30 tons each, something like that. So, let's have a look at them. Before we start filling up these iron ore wagons, I thought I'd show you this book by Country Railway Routes. Um, it's Concert to South Shields by Abimish by Middleton Press. Now, in this book, as with the main photograph, you can see the iron ore wagons here being pulled by an INF and it's being banked as well. But I'm not quite sure what that is. I'm sure it'll tell you inside the book. Anyway, if I open it up, we can see more of the same. Um, let's run this tab. As you can see, we've got an INF there and an O class O1 banking the engine up Gill's Banks and what's interesting as well in this book we have two 9S pasts in each other with a pair of iron ore trains we flip it over to the next page we have another class 9F pulling a rake of 9 iron ore trains sometimes they worked in nines and eights depending on what locos were pulling and the final picture I want to show is this class 24 pulling an iron ore train so you don't necessarily have to have an INF so if you're into your diesels you could use a class type 24. I thought I'd show you that. Right. So the iron ore wagons themselves, well, they are 56 tons. Um, so my estimate earlier was a little bit on the low side. So these are quite heavy beasts in their day. Um, like I said before, they're KR models. They come in packs of three, so I've bought um, nine of these for the train that I'd like to run. Um, one thing you've got to be wary of is when you're taking them out of the packet, is the screws are loose in the housing. So I think what's happening is the screws bot bottom out and then they strip the threads um, because the heads are bigger than the apertures now if the heads went into the aperture they would bottom out in there and get more of a grip I'd imagine and they work a lot better so what I'm going to have to do with this one is put a tiny tiny drop of super glue in there so it'll act like a thread lock and then just whack these in and hopefully that will cure, cure that. So we'll do that first. I'll go around and check them all, make sure that they're all tight and the bogies still move. That's the important thing. Make sure the screws are tight and ensuring that the bogies still move. Um, but apart from that, the detail in these are phenomenal. You know, you look at the photographs and you'd compare them and they are 
I mean, look at that underneath. All those brake vents and um, these are these are gas cylinders. They're uh, hydraulic uh, for opening and shutting the doors to release the iron ore. But uh, we're not going to be releasing any iron ore. We're going to fill these babies up. So let's make a start. Right, so I've done four of these so far and every single screw has been loose. Now I've only ran these from the South Seal station to the um, the bay at Newcastle which is what roughly about uh, 18 meters something like that. I've just picked this one up. My screws are loose. That screws loose. Now, if you've got a roundy roundy layout and you're running these around, 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 eventually these screws will fall out. Um, the reason being, if the, if there's a nice shoulder in there, and I think these screw heads are too big. If you had the right size screw head, that would go into this recess actually give you a bit more of a grip onto this pivot here with a thread in it so I think with these at the moment I'm just putting a tiny tiny dab of super glue into the thread now you might think oh you might not be able to get them undone again well the thing is it's a metal screw and it's a metal thread eventually you'll be able to um, break it loose it's just like acting like a thread lock a medium thread lock put that back over the pivot I'll screw it back in Thing is the screw is right up against the bogey and if you do it up too tight you won't turn so what you do you nip it and then back it off one full turn and that should give you plenty of movement on your bogey and the next thing to do is make sure it's still level on the track yeah, there's, there's no problem there. Just making sure that this bogey is nice and level with this one. Just one more thing about these bogies. Um, if you do use the super glue inside the uh, the thread, just make sure you've backed it off enough so that they turn. Now they might seize if they do. Just give them a twist. Just keep rocking them backwards and forwards, and they'll work loose. And then what I'll do after that, once that's done, I'll just put a little tiny drop of oil in between the axle and the chassis right in there I don't know if you can see that but right in there and then that just helps free it up and it'll be good to go concentrate on putting the ore into these hoppers so we're we'll doing measure the back face from there to there so it's just resting on the edge there just by a couple of millimeters so that works out at 51 millimeters and the width of these hoppers internally are 32 right, so this is what I've, I've drawn up as you can see so we've got 32 51 and then I'm going to put another 
um, a stiffening card underneath but 25 mil wide and that will just uh, go down the center of the card and then the iron ore will be put on that face there so I'm gonna cut my cards out and I shall see you in a bit I have made three strips of card doubled back just like we did in the little picture there 32 mil and 25 mil all I have to do at some point is cut them to 51 millimeters in length but before I do that I just want to give them a coat of very light brown paint on these top faces because this is where the iron ore is going to sit so we don't want any white card showing through I have mixed up some acrylic paints using a tiny touch of red yellow and some burnt umber and we've come up with this uh, well like a brownish orange color which I will use to paint the card and it shouldn't take long to dry and it'll soak right in to the card because this card is very very absorbent do it along the edges as well I've still got to cut it down yet but I just think it saves a little bit of time if we could do the painting in the long lens before we cut them down and then just do the shorter bits afterwards yeah so while I'm waiting for the card to dry out for the iron ore um, wagons I thought I'd um, do the coal hoppers at the same time using this fibre board it's quite light and it's 10 mil thick uh, there you go you can pick it up from most DIY stores um, so yeah so I thought I'd do that at the same time kill two birds with one stone and then that way all my coal wagons and iron ore wagons are done now that the paint is dry I'm just cutting them to length now which is 51 millimeters and uh, once this is done I shall chamfer the backs of each one on one side so that it um, fits in to the hopper quite neatly I shall show you that in a minute once I've got through this one so what I'll do now is just on one side just chamfer that edge so that when it goes into the hopper chamfer then rests on this right angle in the center so now we're back on to the coal wagons now this measurement I've got here 82 and a half millimeters by 26 millimeters fits this type of iron now these are day pole uh, Airfix and Hornby so there's three different models but the internal dimensions are the same but they're the old type with the big D couplings so if you've got any of those this sizes will fit them 82 and a half by 26 and a half and uh, what you have to do with these so I've just scored it there is cut the corner off a little bit 45 degrees probably about three or four mil and uh, it drops in just like that and you leave a little bit of a, a ledge there so when you put the coal in you can get a nice um, triangular shape yeah, if you can so you've got plenty of room there for your filling so once you cut your infill piece uh, to 82 millimeters and it's just a case of roughly about 
three millimeters and then just slice off the corner. Quite easy to cut. Make sure you get it equally though. And then just paint the ends up. Right, get back to the iron ore wagons. Now we're going to start doing the infill. Um, about a year or so ago, probably two years now, um, some of you may remember how I did the cheap walling video and I had to chamfer the corners to get the radius for the walls and uh, I kept all the chafings because I knew eventually I was going to use them to make the iron ore so I've kept all the shavings from when I did the stone walling so all this is just crushed cork I mean if you wanted to use crushed cork if you've got any cork left over from um, laying your track you could crush it and uh, use that so I'm going to use this as a baseline and then I'm going to use some of the ballast fine ballast over the top so it'll be interesting to see how this comes out now there's two ways of doing this I can make them individually and then drop them in or I can make them in the wagons in situ which is what I am planning to do so what I'll do is I'll drop them in they should be a nice snug fit hopefully without um, pushing the sidewalls apart there you go so there you go the nice snug fit and notice the chamfer as we chamfered earlier will sit on there like that so there you go we've got a nice base there to sit the infills in so what I'm going to do now is mix this up some PVA wood glue and then put it in the middle on each one of these let it go off and then go over the top again with the fine ballast so we shall see how that works out and then that should be the iron ore done so there's the um, cork mixed in with some PVA wood glue it's it's fairly it's not a so, uh, soaking mix it's, it's medium um, medium dry as it were it's not soaking wet so it's just dry what I have done is I have put some PVA wood glue onto the card that we've already done and then what we'll do we'll leave that to dry a little bit then we'll put the finer ballast on top
You notice I'm trying to keep it into the center. Also, if you think you've got too much in there, take it out. Because bear in mind, you've still got the finer ballast, which will hopefully seal it all together. You could just chuck in the fine ballast if you wanted to. But I just thought, why not use up the cork? Moving back onto the coal wagons, what I'm using for that is just ordinary um, ballast. But this is the heavy duty ballast, not the fine stuff that I use on my layout. And what I've done, there's some PVA wood glue in the bottom of there. And I'm just mixing it in. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to add some black paint. And this will just be the, the filler before I put some actual coal on. So I'm just going to add a little bit of black paint grimy paint, what I use for me ballasting. I'll mix that in there. Hopefully all that will go a nice black colour. Uh, yet again, it's just a, a semi dry mix. Hopefully the PVA will do its job and uh, bring it all together. So Looks like it's clinging together now. And the paint's gone all the way around down to the bottom, which is good. Just add a little bit more PVA wood glue. So I have got some actual um, fine coal dust which I'll use to finish off but this is just going to be the filler to start with. See how loose they are. Hopefully, I may be able to pull them out afterwards, but I don't think so. So all we want to do with this is just thin it out as best as we can. So now we add a dilution of PVA which is 50-50. this does, it just helps soften it up a little bit then I just uh, break it up a little bit flatten it down Think you got too much in, take it out. I 
Right, so now we can add the real coal once we've added a little bit more PVA solution. Might look a lot, but once you start adding the real coal, it soon dries up. See I mean how quick it's drying up PV solution. Right, so that's the first two of the coal wagons done. So we'll just leave them to dry and we'll crack on with some more. So now it's looking a little bit lumpy and the coal is beginning to shimmer through, you can actually see that. But there's still a few lumps uh, there, so what I'm going to do now is with the diluted PVA solution again. Just uh, hopefully squirt it into the wagon this time. Hopefully what I'm going to do now is uh, try and even out some of these lumps and bumps. Hopefully fill in some of the gaps. As you can see the, the coal is working its way into the to the holes that's been left. Just try and get rid of the lumps on the top. See the way the Blue rules on the dry, on the dry coal. Hopefully that just sorts that out. Bit of a lump there. Let's just try and tap that down. Okay, I think that one's done. Beginning to like the way that that's obviously once that dried out, the uh, coal will start shimmering. Right, so now we're back on the iron ore wagons, and I've been having a little play with this, and um takes a couple of passes so basically this is what we started off with earlier on so we're just putting some 50 50 glue solution around spreading it around 
but before it starts to uh, go down into the wagon let's just spread it around and then try and get the ballast on very quickly because you don't want the the glue to come out the bottom um, it's all try and error but the good thing about doing it this way is you don't see the card like this one here so like I said it takes a couple of passes to do this now what you do now you look out for where it's already damp and you put the glue of the PVA solution on the damp parts so it doesn't roll over see like it did there and you go again Basically, you want to end up with a little bit of a hump in the middle. So it is a bit fiddly. I've got one more pass to make it's still not quite there yet so there's still a lot of dry ballast in there so I mean when it rolls over So the very, very final pass, we just do it very, very lightly. That just helps soak up any of the glue. So it just needs a little bit of tidying up around the edges now. That's it. What'll happen? Give it another five minutes and it'll go like this. Where the um the uh, gl the glue starts um absorbing into the ballast. So the wagons have been left overnight and the the ballast that was put into the hoppers have gone rock hard. Um, the one thing I should like to mention is when you put in the PVA solution is 
it will or it might run out of the bottom there because there's a slot there you can see it and uh, that is always open to the underside of the hoppers so just be wary of that so yeah um, we will come back to these because they need um, toning down because they uh, look like they've just come out of a uh, Cadbury's wrapper so they look quite chocolatey brown they probably were um, I've noticed in the photographs they do look a lot lighter than this um, it's probably because of the iron ore um, tipping and untipping filling up um, would have gone onto the bodies of this so it would have toned it down so I will come back to these at some point for weathering so and what's next I think we should run these have a look at them going around the layout and then we'll see if the 9F can pull all nine of these up Stevenson's back There was never any doubt that the 9F would stall on Stevenson's bank. And she managed to pull up the nine wagons. But in real life, she would have had a banking engine. Maybe another 9F or a class 01. Right, so that so almost brings us to the end of the video. So for you permanent subscribers, here's a little competition for you. I'd like you to name this station. That's going to be built on this baseboard, but it has to include West. Now, please check the comments before you include 
your answer. Uh, I like them to be as varied as possible because, um, yeah, I'd rather uh, there wasn't no duplicate answers. So, and there's only one winner, so there's only one prize. So, it just makes it a lot easier. And this is what you're going to win a box of three iron ore wagons. So, it's not a bad prize. So, get your thinking caps on and name this station for me. Thanks for watching now. Till next time, enjoy your model railways. Bye.